Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Crime and Entertainment. We have a very special guest. I had the pleasure of meeting this young lady about a month ago in Peora, Illinois. My first time ever to that joint at Big Al's. Please welcome to Crime and Entertainment, Lindsay Ryder. Lindsay, how are you? Hi, I'm great. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, I guess we'll start off first. First question. What did you think of the show at Big Al's in Peora? <laughs> it was so much fun. I loved it. I'm sure you could tell how much I loved it. I was like in the audience, like screaming and throwing money and everything. Yes, you were. You seemed <laughs> like you were having a great time. And I was too. I mean, I was a, I was a judge for that event and yeah. man, like that was hard. Like as a judge, it was really hard because as I I didn't know what these girls were doing. And so as one come out and when they would put on the show, I'm like, oh, wow, that one was the best. Then yeah. another one would come on. I'm like, oh, wow, well, that one was the best. It, it was hard because they were all so good and they all brought, you know, creativity and, and something different. It was just it was a really fun show. And yeah, you, you definitely seem to enjoy yourself up there. But I think <laughs> everybody did. It was a fun time. Yeah, the girls like they they are amazing. The girls that were there, um, the they had live music too. That was something I've never seen in a strip club before. I had never That's either. Cool. That was a first for me. Yeah, like where you normally, I guess, would catch DJ breaks, they had literally live music on stage. It was very interesting. Yeah, yeah. And um, the Nia Nebula with her um, hula hoops gets me every time. I'm like, oh my god, how does she do that? She's like. Well, using the hula hoop on her legs and yeah, like switching legs and putting everywhere. legs in between it. I was just like, I've there's no way I got the coordination to pull. I can't even like yeah. regular hula hoop, let alone all the shit. <laughs> right? <hula> <laughs> Same. <laughs> and then she's like, "Can you move?" Like she like made sure to let me know that I needed to move because she was about to like do her trapeze and like hit me right in the face where I was sitting. I was like, "Thank God she told me that." <laughs> Uh, yeah and the uh the confetti there i don't know you see when yeah. i was at when i was there, i had that beer with all the con you couldn't even see the beer it was just all the <laughs> yeah. confetti stuck onto the beer i woke up with confetti in the hotel room i'm like what? they followed me home somehow <laughs> sign yeah. of a good night <laughs> yeah yeah for sure fun time uh well i guess we'll kind of start with you we'll go back you know to begin and tell us a little bit about you know where you grew up what early life was like and then it's always interesting to figure out the path of how people got into this industry yeah okay so um i was raised in a pretty small town um and then i met somebody that um we we ended up moving out to detroit michigan um not such a small town anymore <laughs> right. and we were living on right on eight mile where there's like a just I mean strip club after strip club after strip club on eight mile road and um I um had moved in after like you know I'm always passing them like kind of curious but never even been to a strip club before in my life and I ended up um I, w I had moved for a relationship. The relationship didn't work out. I met somebody like a friend moved in with them for a period of time. And she was previously a um, dancer at the eight mile clubs. And she's like, girl, you should like come work with me or whatever. Like you'll make so much money. So I tried it out. I started as a coach hot girl <laughs> and then I became um, a shot girl and then I was a dancing shot girl. And then I was stripping like full time. And um, so that was my first like experience in um, adult at all. Um, then um, I'm, I, while I was working or whatever, I, I met um, photographers and started like shooting, like doing photo shoots. And then I would promote myself online because social media was just like becoming like a big thing at that time. Like right. I'm old. So this is like back in the day when social media wasn't so like big as it is now. Um, so I would post, you know, photos of myself and be like, come see me at the club. And then like I promote myself as um, doing photo shoots on um, Facebook it was mostly Facebook. And um, I had I think I just started Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> and I um, was 
contacted by somebody that was a scout for the agencies, actually. I mean, I, I had been contacted before about shooting, you know, because I was like, oh, yeah, hire me for your shoot. And I'd get like, you know, the porn shoot stuff or whatever. And I'm like, oh, no, I would. I'm not, I'm not doing that. But when I got um, the, the guy sounded <clears throat> more legit and um, we talked on the phone and everything and he got me in touch with um, Sandra from OC Modeling, who is my agency now. Um, and yeah, it was just when I was talking with her, she just I mean, she it, first off, it's a woman. Um, so that was because I talked to a couple other agencies along the way to, um, but yeah, they, she just, she, she just struck me as somebody that like really knew what they were doing and I felt comfortable with. So I ended up signing with OC and the rest is history. <laughs> yeah, probably um, I'm guessing that puts you a little bit more at ease talking with a woman, you know, getting into this business. And I mean, I'm not saying, yeah. that, you know, gentlemen aren't professionals in this business, but I think coming into it, not knowing, you know, the ins and outs that probably definitely put you more at ease. Yeah, definitely. Like it's not, um, you know, I wouldn't think that I would have to worry about Sandra, you know, um, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Like, I was worried that like, okay, well, what if this person is, um, cause I don't know. I, I didn't know anything about the industry. I didn't know that there's like, there's, um, now I know on, um, um, APAG union and the APAG site, you can go there and like find what, sh um, agents are actually licensed agents and everything. And I did, I mean, I've run across like people, all kinds of people that are, you know, I've, 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 um, met, I would say people that maybe like, I don't want to say are predators, but like kind of predatory kind of behavior or whatever yeah. like oh yeah I can get I can make you like once you you hear like something that's too good to be true or like or you know what you've got to do this for me to do you know I'm like uh so I didn't think you know being a woman I didn't have to worry about that kind of thing with her and yeah I just and and just I don't know, just her personality like is matched, meshed well with me. So, well, and I'm very happy. They've, they've been amazing for me. That's great. Let's back up just a touch. <laughs> so like you had never been into a strip club before until you went in to actually work at one. Yeah. Well, okay. So I just remembered, I did go for a friend's 18th birthday right. over at Deja Vu. Yeah. But, um, I feel like that's not really, it was Flint Deja Vu. There was a huge difference and I don't know how to explain it, but from like a Deja Vu club versus the eight mile strip club, I don't right. know. So um, yeah, it was, I mean, yes. I Other than that one experience where I was like, I too was like just turned 18 and you know, <laughs> I was like probably, I think I was 22 when I got into like, working at the strip clubs right so and it was came, basically my first experience so. <laughs> and you came in as a coat check girl and just kind of gradually worked your way up i mean i guess yeah. when you're doing that you're seeing the type of people that's coming in there you're seeing how many people are coming in there that's just going to gradually pique your interest more and yeah. i'm assuming the higher you go in obviously there's there's more money to be made yeah. what attracted you to actually get on to be the performer was it you know obviously you look like you enjoy when you're dancing and, and having a good time. I know the money always plays a factor in anything anybody does in life. Yeah. What was, what was kind of the draw that eventually led you from coat check girl, shot girl, all the way up to the dance? Um, well, like I said, I, when I was a shot girl, guys would always be, well, even when Chuck Co check, it's like, you know what they can't have, they want kind yeah. of thing. So like, yeah. they'd always be like, Oh, I wish I could get dances from you. And so I just went up to my manager. I was like, can I, like give lap dances in addition to like doing shots and they let me do that for a little while but um eventually it became a situation where the girls were understandably getting upset because I don't have to go on stage and like perform like they did and I can just still, get like, the backroom so, dance yeah. yeah yeah so eventually I had to it was kind of like okay make a decision which one are you going to do and obviously like the money was better and <laughs> I was liking the attention and everything so yeah I made the leap to um dancing and once I got into that um 
I was, it's just a great time. So <laughs> I love dancing. Yeah. Um, so mm -hmm. how long were you doing that before you got into adult film? Um, a long time. Cause I didn't actually get into adult films until oh, I was 35. <laughs> so really? like a good, like 10 years at least. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was definitely like, then social media now has just become so much different, such an intricate part of, of anything, whether it's girls in the industry, podcasts, photographers, whatever. And it's like the biggest free marketing tool that you can use downside to the industry that you're in. You get canceled a lot of not to say canceled, but you get your accounts taken down. I think you said you're on your what third or fourth Instagram right now. Yeah, I'm at, no, um, <laughs> I'm on like my 10th or yeah, like it's, oh, it's a lot because I've had not only like my regular Instagram accounts, but you, like you make up backup accounts so that you can be like, follow my backup account in case this one gets deleted. Mm -hmm. And I've had like several of my backup accounts deleted even right now. I'm, I'm on my backup account using that as my main account. Even it's like a whole thing, but there's like a whole industry I feel like a whole or not industry, but like a whole um, business, like underground business of like buying and selling accounts and yeah. or um, yeah. And like, I mean, because I had people, you know, oh, your account got deleted. Let me um, help you with that. And they're like, oh, I can get you your account back if you pay X amount of money or I can even get you this account that has you know, 400,000 followers on it and it's a blank account. I'm like, huh, that seems kind of weird because, yeah. you know, my account got deleted for no reason. And now you want to sell me an account. Like maybe you're the one that's like getting my account deleted. So I don't mess with that, but yeah, it's a huge pain in the ass. Cause, um, a lot of, I mean, supposedly a lot of companies, they look at your follower numbers mm -hmm. and, you know, people that are possibly like looking into joining your OnlyFans might look at the amount of followers you have to see whether you're legitimate or not. But it's like, you know, it's not worth it. I don't think to like, buy. I just don't care enough, I guess, to like actually spend money to get the shit back. I just like keep coming out with new ones and right. hopefully the best, but it's got to be annoying as like a fan or whatever. It's like every other day I'm like, Oh, my account got deleted. Follow this one. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry. And also like there's so many knockoff and fake accounts. Like when we, yeah. I was like, well, I follow you on Instagram. And he was like, I don't, I don't know if you do or not. And I looked and it, it wasn't, it was like a, a bogus, you know, made up account. And I had to go yeah. find a real one. And so that I know can be kind of frustrating, especially when you're trying to drive stuff to your site. But if you take, if you have it for over a period of years and you get up until the hundreds of thousands, I mean, I know some people that has, you know, in the millions and it gets taken down financially and, you know, audience, sometimes it might be worth it. I think, uh, you know, Alexa Fox, Alexis Fox. Yeah. Yeah. I actually have a scene with her coming out soon. For All right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We have to check that out. Now I've had her on the show in the past and I follow her on Instagram and she was just putting out something yesterday about somebody to help get her Instagram account back. And I think last time I checked, she had either a million or 2 million followers. So when you have that many, like then it becomes worth it to do that. But if you keep getting taken down, once you kind of get into the hundreds of thousands, it, yeah, like, I'm like you, somebody could be out there searching, figure out, okay, this person would probably pay to get it back, hack them and then turn around and try to sell it right back to them. It's, it's definitely a racket. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And like also, um, the whole, um, with the whole, like, um, fake accounts of me or whatever, I've had people be like, um, is this really you because this person messaged me saying that they'll meet up with me if I send them X amount of money? Like, no, no, don't send anybody money. Like, I will never do that. Yeah. And that's just becoming so common nowadays. Like if people just yeah. work ethic into doing something positive instead of scamming, you know, they could probably, you know, do something. Really yeah. Cool, though, it's because I mean. it's all online. Like you can be anybody online. Right. Exactly. So. So when you first got into the adult film industry, what was kind of like your first scene or first thing that you shot? Did you go into it with, 
I only want to work with males. I'm just going to work with females. What was your like, you know, interest into the business? What was your mindset? Yeah. Um, so I actually, well, I started with just males. Like I really just wanted to shoot with just like boy, girl scenes. Mm -hmm. And my very first, um, scene was for mom POV and it was kind of, um, um, like, a, well, obviously a point of view. So it wasn't like, it was just me and the talent. Um, he was also doing the filming. So, um, it wasn't a full set of, and then, um, well, I guess I can't really say I only wanted to do boy girl because one of my <laughs> next scenes was for penthouse and it was a orgy scene. <laughs> it was just like, there was so many people to go from like what I, what I had done to like this big ass orgy and everything. I was like, Oh my God. And penthouse too has a ton of people, um, on their sets even if it's just a boy girl scene so like <laughs> it was so many people it was crazy but um another scene one another one of my first scenes was a um foot fetish scene for love her feet and I had never done foot fetish anything and <laughs> so it's all new and I'm having a great time like getting to experience like new sexual things and like right. so jumping in with game. both feet no pun intended <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> now, before, like, you know, getting into this industry, were you a very sexual person? I mean, was that something that you enjoyed? You experimented a lot, you know, had you had threesomes before, you know, you got into this? So what, what was kind of new to you? Yeah. So I went through like a period of time, like I think a lot of girls do like college years where yeah. um, you're kind of like experimenting with like, am I bi? Am I like, like a bi curious. Yeah, bi curious. Yeah, for sure. Like, yeah, I was like attracted to females, but I didn't think I was like attracted to men for sure. But um, so I did. I did experiment a little with like girls and with um. I I had like a, I guess they would call it in the industry a, <laughs> a, a BGG, but <laughs> so a boy girl girl like um. Uh, I, I was like third wheeling on a couple and <laughs> joined them in the bedroom. <laughs> um, yeah, that, I mean, obviously like I've always loved sex who does that. Right. Most people do, but, um, nothing like, no, I wasn't as much of a slut as I am now. <laughs> <laughs> like now I'm like, you know, why did I, like, why was I so worried about like what people's <laughs> opinions and like worrying about like just being with one person at a time or whatever, or like such bullshit, in my opinion. Yeah. I'd like to just like, you know, it's fun to experience like more people and it's just fun to like have sex with multiple people. <laughs> Absolutely. Now you mentioned the word slut. You have a shirt that is, I don't know if you have one laying around. That is like, I don't know how that's not like a bestseller somewhere. I hope you got a website selling that. <laughs> Because you know you can't copyright slogans, so you could make that and put that. That what is exactly what does that say? Um, it says it's in giant letters. It says "slut" across the top, and of course, it's very form fitting. Oh yeah. <laughs> and underneath, in tiny letters, it says "sexy later ladies under tremendous stress." <laughs> and I like when I was, I was wearing it um to the beach, actually, well. We didn't plan on going to the beach. We went to dinner, of course. I wore it. I wore it actually at a very nice restaurant, <laughs> and uh, and then we walked to the beach afterward. And on our way to the beach, like people were, you could tell, like everyone's like like trying to read it, but it's like so hard to read. And then this one guy was like, "Sexy ladies under," and then I was like, "Tremendous stress," because I had already passed him. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, that's, that's gold, man. I love it. Um, yeah, that's that needs to be a bestseller, man. I never seen that before. Uh, seen you wearing it, I was like, yeah, that's a that's a good one for sure. So you're jumping into the industry. You're trying all these different things. I mean, did you know right off the bat like this is something that you were gonna enjoy? No, I had no idea how it would go. I was just like, I mean, um, I I was very much reassured that you know like you can you can the thing is like with the industry now I don't think it was this way in the past but like now you really get to a lot of 
um, say on, you know, which scenes you do, what you're comfortable doing, like what sexual things you're okay with doing. Um, even before like scenes are shot, there's a lot of like talk about what are your do's and don'ts and yeah. all this. So like, it's a lot of consent. So, um, I'm very fortunate to have gotten in the industry when it's this way. And um, I didn't know that it was going to be that way when I joined. So I was like, you know, if they, if anything that I'm uncomfortable with or whatever, I can get out any time. So that was, but no, I'm having a great time. I've been doing it now. I'm going on five years. Yeah. Well, okay. that is a great time to get in the business because like you yeah. said, it's not always been a luxury that some of the girls have been afforded in the past. So yeah. for you to be able to, you know, pick and choose this or that, and you know, that's, that's great. Speaking of do's and don'ts, can you share some of your don'ts? I, I think that's what always people are always drawn to. Okay. What, what is on your no list? And sometimes it's something that people wouldn't think, but then sometimes it's obvious why it's on your no list. Yeah. So my big one is like any anal play. I'm not really into anal. Um, I don't even, I, well, actually, you know what? I've been surprised <laughs> because I've had to, like, while I've been doing stuff, <laughs> um, for content purposes, like a guy will like stick his finger up my ass and I'm like, oh, that actually like feels good. <laughs> so maybe I would <laughs> like it, but I'm not at a point where I'm like, oh yeah, I want to do an anal scene or whatever. Like uh, I've heard a lot of like preparation too, and I'm kind of lazy. <laughs> I just want to, sh I just want to fuck. And like not have to like do all this work ahead of time. Yeah, um, there is quite a bit of preparation. We had Ryan Connor on, uh, who's a, a legend, and oh, yeah, a her. lot of what she done was and she used to say, like, you know, the prep work the night before, she, they would try to get all of them to shoot like first thing in the morning. That way they could get it out of the way. And you know, yeah. there is it's not as easy as just show up and do that. There is a lot of preparation, especially for those types of scenes. So it's, it's not for everybody for sure. Yeah, no, not for me, not, not for me. Um, and then, <laughs> um, I am not really, I mean, I am. Okay. This one's hard to explain because like, I am into girls. I'm attracted to girls. Um, it's more or less like, I don't know what I'm doing. So I'd rather just stick to <laughs> either guys or like, I'll do like, um, um, girl, girl, guy, you know, like scenes mm -hmm. like that or orgies or whatever. There's got, there's somehow there's, if there's a dick involved, I'm good. But if <laughs> it's just me and the girl, I'm not like super comfortable with that. Yeah. I have done some, some, um, scenes like girl girl scenes but i just feel like um i i prefer to like stick to having a man in the bedroom with me <laughs> now, is that because like you don't enjoy in the middle of it, or do you feel like you have to reciprocate and you're just a little bit you know unsure of how to navigate those waters because i mean like i would think if you just laid there and the girl done everything to you that would be kind of hard to not enjoy Oh, well, yeah, but like I have to reciprocate and like if I'm reciprocating, it's got to be good. I don't want it to be like, oh, yeah. like <laughs> you don't want to half ass anything. Yeah. <laughs> so it's got to be it's there's got to be like chemistry and uh, everything for me, like for for me when I'm shooting, like it can be really it can be any guy like, it's, like but like with females, like there, there's something we I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. Um well, that's interesting. I'm still you trying to figure it out myself. But. You need the chemistry with the female, but with the guy, yeah. not so much. Right. Yeah. The, the guy, I mean, I'm just like, I, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Yeah. You know, what? You know <laughs> how to work that equipment. Yeah, exactly. I have a yeah. lot more experience. There you go. <laughs> now lot. we have, <laughs> we have to bring up and discuss some clips that you sent me on, <laughs> on Instagram, this concept called cock blockers. Yes. Uh, who was the, the creative genius behind this? How did you get involved in this? And as best you can try to navigate us through this uh, particular, I don't know if you would call this ordeal scene <laughs> fiasco. Cause it was quite something. <laughs> Um, yeah, so, 
I was, I was telling you previously that, um, I did a lot of shoots, like a lot of photo shoots and I had, um, worked a lot with this photographer. His name is Robert Poss and he's done a lot of, um, like before I got into the, uh, um, adult films side of things, um, I was shooting with him, uh, for different like magazines and publication things. And I, um, he ended up, um, staying like, okay. <laughs> for those of you that don't already know what the sausage castle is, it's basically a big party house and orgies happen. Um, just, I mean, like it's comedy, it's sex. It's like, it's just anything and everything happens at this place. Sausage. Okay, castle. Where is this sausage? Castle? And, um, it's some like weird area of Florida. I can't remember the city, but it's like outside of like Orlando, like I want to say a couple, an hour or so out of Orlando. I think it took me like three hours to get there from Tampa. Okay. I wish I could remember the city name, but there's like say. nothing out there except for this place. It's like out in the middle of a, I, I don't even know, it, just out in the middle of nowhere. I'm assuming this anyway, is not on so like a Google review or anything, or, or is it that known that this is what this is? <laughs> oh yeah, no, the, the, yeah. you. So it's Mike Busey. And I think I want to say he's like, related to Gary Busey and um he's I mean that Gary's son I no I think it's more like Gary's his uncle maybe? okay okay Something like that don't That's quote right. me Jake, on it. I could Jake be wrong Busey's uh Gary's son Jake Busey he's been in a few minutes oh okay okay but um yeah so he has this big party house while well, Robert Poss the photographer that I was working with started staying there um that Another thing I should add is that members of the the Sausage Castle or the Mike Busey show, because it's <laughs> like I'm I'm telling you, anything and everything happens at this place. So it's like a giant, like just party house. And um it's basically like he has almost like a reality show, but it's not a reality show kind of thing. Um anyway, people stay people that are members of their site get to stay there too so they have these bunk beds and everything like I went there to do this shoot with Robert and there's like people just like sleeping like strangers <laughs> in the house and like I go to like go use the bathroom and there's like somebody in it and then there's people fucking in a bed like it just like anything and everything there's a a little person um walking around there's like a, a <laughs> there's goats there's pigs there's yeah just like just just Damn. randomness everywhere. <laughs> so anyway, I got hooked up with this this sausage castle and Mike Busey and everything through Robert because he was staying there, um, and providing like content for for them. He was like basically their house photographer, and so they do they for promotion purposes they shot a lot. They still shoot, but at the time they they shot a lot of models. Still shoot a lot of models. But at the time, it was through Robert. Anyway, so I've kept in contact even after Robert left and everything. And um, I wanted to do a shoot. I've done like multiple shoots there. And I always get great content when I go there. Um, it's basically trade. Like they can use the photos. I can use the photos. So right. it's really cool. And I'm I'm out in Florida a lot. So I um, this last time I was out there for for a feature show that I was doing. And I um, contacted Mike Busey and I was like, hey, are you guys doing anything? Like, I'd love to get content while I'm out here. He's like, oh, yeah, come on up. Like, and it's basically that way all the time. Like, just, oh, yeah, come on up. We'll figure something out. So um, he's like, what were you thinking? And I was like, well, honestly, like, I, I need photos, but I wouldn't mind getting, like, some video stuff, too. He's like, oh, yeah, we can do that what kind of video would you like to do? Like, what are you, were you thinking? I'm like, well, I've never had a gangbang and I've been waiting for a gangbang scene or a blow bang or whatever, like multiple guys, you know, if we could figure something like that out. And um, he's like, oh yeah, for sure. But then somehow it became like, uh, what do you think of this concept? We have this show, it's called um uh cock blockers and it's basically um we 
pick a member or somebody from uh the from the house and to get a blow job but we fuck with him during the blow job and try to make it so he doesn't come so like it's kind of like a it's like a game show but like a weird very weird strange <laughs> porn and <laughs> like just like all this stuff. so don't ask me how it came from gangbang to this but it did and I'm like fuck it yeah I'll do that <laughs> that sounds hilarious <laughs> I've seen that thing and it's kind of like they told he told him like what would bother you and he kind of gave him you know instances of things that would probably throw his game off now yeah. he said like you know dicks in his face or whatever it was now the first <laughs> one wasn't too bad because it was women fucking with him and they had strap on so not quite the same thing as a man standing in your face so yeah. i could see where maybe he could power through that and push through that especially if you're you know doing your end of the deal there but what in the hell come up with the second it was like what, was he a cow or something like that or Oh, <laughs> yeah, they, they dressed them as the a hell cow. They, first off, they put them in. The, there's other there's other episodes of it, but for my, the episode that I was in, um, they had him dressed as a cow, put fake eyelashes on him, put makeup on, like all the, you know, just uh, he had like a bright pink wig on. <laughs> and uh, so just an embarrassing outfit. And then I, I didn't, you didn't get to see the beginning of it. The first, the very first one there, they were actually clowns that came out <laughs> and you, you missed that one. Cause I don't have that one on my phone, but um, yeah, there was clowns that came out fucking with them. There's the Dom people that like, he, yeah, she had the strap on and was like, and she she's like hitting him with the little flogger or whatever like what do you think you're doing you can't come <laughs> and I'm just like looking at him like and I'm like just pay attention to me just pay attention to me and I'm like sucking his dick and then uh the, the last one yeah the last one was where it all went to hell because they have um they have different characters on the the Mike Busey thing and one of them I guess is this corn guy <laughs> so he is like in this corn mask and outfit and then he gets naked and is like rubbing himself with butter. <laughs> and there's just like corn, like he's got um, stalks of corn. He's putting it in his face after he's like put it all over his crotch and everything. And then there's this grape man in a grape suit banging on the drums really loud next to us. I'm like, no, look, look at me, look at me. <laughs> look. <laughs> <laughs> it was crazy yeah yeah I, I, yeah, yeah. I think i might have could have held it together but when the corn guy come out yeah things got a little out of hand um yeah there was corn all he, he was actually you know the guy doing it um his name's caddy daddy <laughs> and he was very sweet because he was trying to make sure that no corn or butter got in my hair or anything <laughs> but he was covered and it smelled like butter and corn it was bad <laughs> But and it was so, it was hilarious. I definitely never thought I would do that before. But <laughs> and so the object is obviously you try to see if you can over help him overcome all these distractions and yeah. Get him. yeah. And can yeah. you share the outcome with the audience right now or not? Do you want them to go check it oh, out? You got to see it. You got to see it. <laughs> Where can they check that out? Because I tell you, folks, uh, if it, that was worth uh, watching, where can they go to track that down? <laughs> it's the Mike Busey show, but Mike, uh, Mike Busey.com or maybe it's Mike Busey show.com, but I think it's Mike Busey.com. Yeah, definitely <laughs> go give that one a look. Uh, definitely, definitely worth a watch. I got a good, uh, laugh out of that. Um, did you, and there's just, there's all kinds of content too on their site. Like that's just either hilarious or there's sexy stuff. There's all kinds of stuff. So it's definitely worth checking out. Did you get to shoot the gangbang yet? I didn't. I did not. Still waiting for my game bang. <laughs> Is that kind of one of the next things on the the bucket list of the adult film experience for you? Is it getting a game? I mean, right? yeah, I would like that to happen. I would let the more dicks, the better. So. <laughs> okay, so let's let's elaborate on that. What what is the number you're thinking of? Because we, there's been some crazy numbers thrown around in the past. Are you trying to? break records or you just want a decent amount yeah. uh, for you know a good film what what's what's the right amount of dicks you're talking about yeah um so i would just like a dick in my mouth and a dick 
in my pussy and then like people like guys surrounding me like jerking off too and everything that's like my like fantasy that's what I have in my head I'm not thinking of like breaking <laughs> any, I'm not breaking any records or like right. you know tons and tons like it just never ends nothing like that I'll I'll dip my toes in yeah. and see where I, how I like it and then we'll we'll talk about record breaking <laughs> and wait around the shallow waters for a little bit see what's yeah. going on <laughs> um one of the biggest changes I think because you got into business 2019 ish right yeah. So, I mean, I don't really know what you got to experience before the landscape of everything really changed with COVID because right. you know, obviously clubs and shit got shut down. I'm not sure what the adult film industry was doing as far as shooting and stuff like that. I don't know if that got kiboshed, but then you always have something. It's like something good comes out of a, a bad situation. You had OnlyFans and that kind of gave a whole new avenue, especially to people in a profession like yours. Then you're able to control your own content. You're able to make your own content. You could essentially shoot out of an apartment. You could turn an apartment into a, a studio. So many avenues for people that has fans that's, that's wanting this kind of content. What was your reaction, you know, when you first get in, you first getting your feet wet, then COVID was OnlyFans something you gravitated to pretty quickly? What was like that experience? Yeah. Um, so when I when I first started. I was just booked so many scenes and everything went smoothly. There wasn't like a, you know, it was just, you know, uh, my, my agency would be like, these are your bookings and the bookings would happen. Um, then COVID came along <laughs> and the, yeah, like you said, thank God for, for only fans and the online stuff. Um, I'm on many vids, loyal fans, only fans, sex Panther, all of that. And I would say probably sex Panther is my favorite one, but, um, uh, it's like a, a, a good thing and a not so good thing for me personally, um, because I don't do well with customs. I don't, um, I do them. But um, I think there's a lot of performers that are quicker about doing them and maybe, you know, like have stuff of it. They, it what I always say is like, if you want a custom, I'm probably not the person you want to go to because it's going to take me a while, you know, all this stuff. Um, but it is awesome that there's that um, mm -hmm. option out there. And I definitely... Um, enjoy like like I said I prefer sex panther because it's like one-on-one -on -one, you're talking to the person like we're talking right now I can see you they can see me we can interact whereas like doing like custom stuff or whatever it's kind of like first off there's some crazy shit out there that is like no I'm not doing that <laughs> or there's just like you know just uh, there's like a very high expectations to be chatting all day yeah have people up to sell your videos right. instead of just fucking okay here's a video like do you want the video or not <laughs> like that's like more my style like um and then with with what happened with the industry um obviously there's a lot of testing that goes on um during that especially we were getting constant cancellations because somebody would test positive for COVID and then um so then everybody has to it can't go, you know, to the scene or somebody would, um, they'd find out that they have COVID while on set. And so everybody that was on that set could not shoot for, even if they were, even if they were tested negative, you couldn't shoot if you were exposed. Right. So there was a ton of cancellations. Um, it, I, I am in Michigan, so I fly, to LA or to Vegas or whatever, wherever the shoots are for a, you know, a week or two at a time and get all my shoots done. Well, I'm flying from Michigan. And then I find out, um, that I have COVID or I tested positive, even if it's a, a false positive, they right. treat it as a positive. Even if I, even if I go and get another test and it's like, oh, you're negative and I have no symptoms at all. It's like, sorry about your luck. So I, I, fly out there and then I have to fly home. It was a whole thing. And I feel like a lot of, um, 
I feel like there's like been a lot of continued cancellations, like last minute cancellations. I don't know whether it's COVID related or something else is going on, but, um, or if it's just cause people know, oh, well I can, I can go home. I can make this money at home. I don't need to yeah. be on. Set. So if I don't feel like it, I'm not going to go or whatever. There's like a lot of, um, it, it just felt like when I first started, everything ran so smoothly. And now it's just like, kind of like, well, I hope this happens. Right. <laughs> so, well, I, and I want to elaborate on, you know, the, the differences between those two, but you mentioned like crazy requests real quick. What's one <laughs> of the craziest requests that you had to just tell this guy? No, I'm not, I'm not doing that. That's, that's My favorite one, just because of the, the silliness of it. Like, I don't know if this guy was serious. Or if it was just like a joke or what, but his his screen name even was Mr. Beans. Like I I'm sorry, Mr. Beans, for putting you out there, but I mean, he was like, I want to send you a can of beans, and I want you to eat that can of beans and fart for me. Do like a fart fetish video and talk to me dirty while you're farting into the camera and. I was like, I'm sorry, Mr. Beans. I can't do that. I can't fart on command. And also, like, why? I don't want a video like that of me out there. Right. That's, I mean, <laughs> there's just some weird shit, man. People have weird, and I mean, God bless them. You know, if it's, that's if that's their thing, then and, and have right, it. Yeah. I'm sure there's somebody out there that would love to eat those beans and, and, and take care of that for you. Um, yeah. But, I mean, just people just really have a lot of crazy off-the-wall shit that it, that does it for them. And, you know, like I said, I'm not knocking anyone and what, what does it for them, but I think that's the good thing about industries like this. There's always a niche for somebody, whatever it is. Yeah. You have. Like he, he didn't find it with you. Obviously that's not your thing, but I guarantee you eventually he found somebody that would do that for him. And, yeah. and that's, that's what, you know, all of it, that's what it all boils down to is, you know, satisfaction, people wanting to get, you know, what they might not be getting from home, what they might not be getting from their significant other, that's what it boils down to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, yeah. So curiosity here, you're doing good with the filming. Only fans comes. That's obviously a way to make money. It's, it's easier because you, like you said, you don't have to leave. You don't have to fly. You're mm -hmm. getting to keep all of the content. Mm -hmm. You can post it up on your thing. There's a lot of benefits to it. When filming starts to pick back up, did they have to be a little bit more competitive in their pay to draw people back out into the industry or is it kind of like you miss everything that's tied in with that like the travel and the you know being on set do they do they up their game to bring you back or are people more some people not necessarily you more apt to just stay home and do their own thing yeah i think a lot of uh i think there's performers that chose you know to stay at home and yeah like you said like if you want to pay me more for scenes like that makes sense but I didn't do that I just like I just like it and also for me it's more like okay how am I gonna get my name out to like worldwide right I get my name out by shooting shooting scenes and like that's how I accumulate um you know different fans from different parts of the world that otherwise would not know a single thing about me so right I feel and, like it's not only am I getting paid, not only am I getting to do something that I love, not only am I getting to travel, but I'm also getting like exposure out of it. So yeah. for me, I'm just like, I'm happy with what I do for what I do. Like, I don't need more money to do it or anything like that. Right now. And you also feature at uh, clubs as well. That's another big way to, you know, get your name out there. When you feature and you travel to these towns, you go to these different clubs. That's something you're doing as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And that was always my goal. You can even see on my very first porn, a mom POV, as well as like the, through the whole time, like every, anytime I did like an interview or, you know, somebody asked me when I'm shooting, um, like what, so what's the reason that you got into the porn industry or whatever, every single time it was like, because I'm a feet or I'm a house dancer and it's always been my dream to like feature dance um you know where I'm I'm the center of the attention <laughs> for and I'm only there to put on my show and then I can do you know lap dances I can sell merch or whatever but really I'm, I'm paid to come in do a great show and then um 
you know, get to travel, like you said, travel all over and I'm loving it. So when at the height, like the height, when you first started, when everything was, you know, business was rolling and business was booming, like how, what is your travel schedule? Like, I mean, is it six days a week? Do you try to get home on the weekends? Like what's a, what's a work schedule, right? For Lindsay Ryder when, when everything was popping in the beginning. So yeah. In, well, in the beginning, like when yeah, I first yeah. started, yeah, like in the beginning when things was rolling and then compare it to like, is it is it picked back up and is the, the schedule comparable to now a little bit less hectic? Oh, okay. Yeah. So when I, when I, when I started, I would um, tend to, I, I, w- I was just traveling to pretty much, pretty much LA um, and I'd be here for like 10 to 14 days or whatever. Um, and then I go home and that was basically it. Um then during COVID, um, obviously, yeah, like I said, I was like traveling there and then I have to travel home where like shit would get fucked up. And um, so and and really you weren't supposed to be traveling at that time either. So I was mostly home. Um, and then after COVID, um, it's been crazy because also another part about COVID is that I feel a lot like a lot of people left L.A., Cause it's very expensive to live out here first off. And if you can't work, there's no work going on. Like they moved out. So a lot of, a lot, it seems to me, I don't know whether this is true or not. It might just be my thought, but like, it seems like there's a lot of um, people in the industry that moved to Vegas. Yeah. So I even like now I even like, we'll do like a week. Like I'm right now um, I'm doing like some of my, I'm splitting it between LA and Vegas because there's production companies at both now. Um, so, but that's not like a big deal there. It's pretty close, it's not too crazy to like travel to, but um, now that I have the featuring, I've got that going on where I'm just like all over the place on weekends. I usually do like every other weekend though, cause I do have kids. So I like to be home for one weekend and then alternate like every other weekend at the very minimum. Right. Um, yeah, but I do that. I do, um, I do shoots. Like f- I still do my photo shoots. So like I have one set up for Chicago coming up soon and just all over the place. <laughs> now that, now that we can travel again. <laughs> yeah. Busy girl. And I, I yeah. mean, that's the cool thing with this podcast too. It it gives me the opportunity to travel to different places. Like, you know, coming mm-hmm. down to Peoria when I seen, uh you and all the performers that was down there i went to new york quite a bit i went to vegas for my first time actually earlier this year and i love vegas man it was super fun what's some of your most favorite clubs that you've toured or been a feature at um so i let me think about this i've 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 done a lot of i've done the most amount of my shows in new york city so far Mm -hmm. um for the same company sapphire okay so obviously they keep having me back. So I'm going to say yeah. <laughs> Sapphire. Um, and also I have, um, I have quite a few fans that are in New York city that it's funny. They come to every one of my shows. So that's kind of cool. Like seeing the same people coming back and like huh. kind of establishing like a little bit of a fan base yeah, um, for my featuring. I haven't returned to anywhere else other than Sapphire, but um, I had a really great time at Rick's Cabaret in Pittsburgh. That was probably one of my favorite shows just for, for the energy of it. It's a big club and it was packed and like everybody was interacting and just like seemed to really like be having a lot of fun with my show. So that was a lot, that was really cool. They actually broke out um, one of my songs is my, one of I have like several different um, themes for shows. And one of them is a MILF. It's called MILF and Cookies. And (laughs) (laughs) for that one, um, one of my songs is uh, Stacy's Mom, which hasn't played in forever. And I was like, people aren't going to know this shit. Like I've got Mrs. Robinson playing, which I mean, people know, but it's old as hell. And um, Stacy's mom, and then Milf Money by Fergie. Well, anyways, yeah. when when Stacy's mom came on, everybody in the club it seemed like was singing to it, and I was like, "Oh my god, this is awesome! This is what it feels like to be a rock star." <laughs> it was crazy. Captured that moment. <laughs> yeah, 
And then I was there for two days and like some of the same people from um from the night before came back to see my second show. So that was really cool. Yeah, that's cool. Now, had you been to Big Al's before they had that one down there recently? Because didn't that used to be in a different building? I have no idea. That was my first experience in oh, really? Indiana, period. I I was like, what the hell is period? <laughs> yeah, I'd so, never heard of that either. Like, I was all, yeah. they was like, it's going to be near Chicago. And I'm like, oh, okay. But like, that's not really my idea of Chicago, or at least what I, I've never been to no. this city, but. <laughs> That's not no, what I think we, of when I think of Chicago. <laughs> we stayed in Chicago and it took about like, I want to say like two hours. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I was I, originally, I was going to fly into O'Hare and drive, but then it was like another hundred dollars and you can fly straight into Peoria. And I'm like, yeah, that's oh. cool. Cause you know, after leaving those things, you're tired. You don't want to get up the next morning and drive. Yeah. Oh my God. I had the worst fucking trip. We did. Got, got to, oh, Char- did you? Oh, I got to Charlotte. My flight was canceled. I had to take a fucking um, three hour Uber ride back to home, like to be able to get to work that next Monday morning. It was, it was the worst trip home ever. Like that's been happening a lot. Flight cancellations. I got stuck in New York city for three days because of that shit. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Mine, I mean, it was only like a three hour difference, but when they canceled mm-hmm. it, it was at like 10 at night. So oh. that limits your availability to do anything. Yeah. Go run a car. All of the one way, rental cars are gone. It's got to be a round trip. So obviously I'm not going to drive three hours home and then back the next fucking day when I need to stay there. And luckily I wound up, uh, finding some guys that was heading to the same area that I was. And we all split a Uber at like two in the morning and it got me home around five. And then I came in showered and went straight to work. So I made it to work on time. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I, I told them, I was like, oh, y'all don't know what kind of dedicated employee y'all got. I took a three hour Uber ride to get here by guy. <laughs> And did you drink tequila with us? I can't remember. Did you yes. have some shots of tequila? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, the tequila had me. Um, I didn't want to leave. <laughs> <laughs> I was definitely in a party mode. I had to be basically dragged out of that place. <laughs> and thank God I did because it could have gone real bad if I stayed. <laughs> But yeah, I woke up with freaking confetti in the hotel room <laughs> and like, what? <laughs> Yeah, fun time. Fun. fun time. It was um, a big club. I wasn't expecting it to be so big. It either. was. And I was looking at all those pictures when you walked in. I don't know if you paid attention, but all those like famous stars and sports figures that had been there. But I think what I was researching oh, I was that. Yeah, as soon as you walked in, all those pictures on the door, if you looked, I'm assuming that was Big Al. I never really got the history of the club, but it was the same guy in all the pictures. Um, you know, sports stars, boxers, football players, actors, a lot of people from Sopranos TV show was in there. Um, I think it was at a different location before it was, I guess, moved to wherever, you know, we were at. Um, but I'm oh, not a hundred percent on that. Cause that was my first time being there, but definitely it was a huge, uh, huge place. So I was very, uh, yeah. you know, impressed with the layout of that club. I bet that thing does, you know, rock pretty good on the weekends for sure. Even oh, yeah, in, like that, but probably not a whole whole lot of people compared to Chicago, but yeah, definitely a nice venue for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It was cool. Um, if people are interested in tracking down, like where you're traveling to, you know, your schedule, where can they go to find all that information? Not Instagram. <laughs> Cause I'll be deleted <laughs> before you even, before this even airs, I'll like yeah. have a new Instagram. I'll be on my like eighth Instagram account since this, so <laughs> not Instagram. And I'm uploading it in a couple of days, folks. I'll let you know right now. <laughs> that lets you know the content quality that she's putting out. She gets banned every other week here for crying out loud. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I have my own site, actually, and I'm working on um, making it so that I can actually have, like, clips for sale and stuff like that on there. But for now, it's basically an, a... a a glorified link tree <laughs> that's right. where you can find all my updated um uh social media accounts and everything so if i got taken down you can just go to there and like find me there it's um lindsay det which stands for detroit by the way people are like lindsay deet what does that mean <laughs> i um it's l-i-n-z-e-e det.com or you can do lindsayrider.net it points to the same place um and i would say the best like social media to follow me on the most fun because it's not censored is twitter and i'm um lindsay xxx on twitter i'm not sure if uh 
posting Twitter handles will get you a little slap on the wrist. I know YouTube oh. certain things will. Oh, okay. Um, well, yeah, you well, might not want to do either one of those things. I can put Instagram, but I know obviously you're not, uh, you don't have a very good, you've been a bad girl on there. You don't have a great track. I'm on there. Facebook. Yeah, yeah, I can do that. I can do the Facebook page, Lindsay Ryder. And okay. I think the link is like Lindsay Ryder Facebook. Yeah. I seen, I think I, I follow you on there as well. So yeah, we can okay. link that up in there for sure. I know I can't so link do whatever you want. <laughs> Wherever you want to follow me is fine. I'm I just can't warning do direct you website that. links because with that, uh, with the, some of the content, you will get a, a slap on the wrist and a spank yeah. on YouTube and algorithms there. Um, well, I've had a fun time talking, man. I, I think you're, you know, you're plugging yeah. right along. What is like some aspirations that you, you have going forward? Is there any specific talent that you want to work with? I mean, obviously we did discuss you're looking to do a gangbang soon, but is there any specific talent that you want to try to get in, uh, do scenes with? I mean, what's kind of some next on the horizon goals for Lindsay Ryder? Um, definitely more featuring. That's the, like what I have. I, I just, I love being at strip clubs, whether I'm like a customer <laughs> and throwing money and drinking or there to dance or whatever. I just love strip clubs. I love strippers. I love the atmosphere of it. It's what I've been doing for most of my um, sex work time. So um, definitely the featuring for sure. Um, and like you said, the gangbang, blow bag. Um, I wouldn't mind doing a glory hole scene too. <laughs> um, and as far as like who I want to work with, um, I don't really like, I don't follow porn like that, which is probably bad. I probably should like <laughs> no names of like, really, I need to get better at that. But um, I've worked with Karen Lee and it's always fun with him on browser sets and everything. So I wouldn't mind like doing more scenes for browsers. Obviously they're like a huge company and right. um, Karen Lee is just awesome. He's hilarious and like, and sexy too. And has a nice dick so it's an insured did you know that it's insured for like a million dollars or something an insured penis he I, insured have, I have never heard tell of such that is very interesting a yeah, million yeah. Dollars. i'll work with that again <laughs> i mean what is what what is the dangers of something happening to it there i don't understand i mean obviously you know college athletes can blow out a knee and you know yeah. roll an ankle but what what's the dangers of a of a working cock here. Well, what's he scared going to happen to it? <laughs> well, what happens when you're like bouncing up and down and then like you bounce down and it like kind of like, uh, yeah, like does that like break it? I don't know. I Maybe don't. I mean, I've, I've had that happen. It is definitely not a pleasant experience. There's a, <laughs> there's a post that gets floated around Facebook quite a bit and it's Dennis Rodman, the former basketball player. Oh yeah. Yeah. And it's like, you know, it's all the things he's done in his time, but I guess there was a sexual experience. I think it was with Madonna where he said he broke his dick and there's an x-ray of his dick. Like it, you can, oh whatever God. that is in there, it, it's definitely broke. Yeah. So, Cause it's not like, a, it's not a bone, like right, it's, not a boner, a bone. But it's not a bone. Right. Yeah. I'm, I never have it's been to muscle? that extent, but I mean, like his was apparently pretty bad. And oh, wow. so I guess that that is uh, a possible, I, I was, assumingly it can be repaired, but I've never heard of insuring a cock. That is definitely uh, something I've never heard of. And for, yeah, a yeah. Cock, wow. <laughs> I mean, see yeah. what you learn when you talk to me. Yes. <laughs> I'll find out the insurance company if you want to go in for a. <laughs> yeah. Gotta get a deeper deal. What else do you guys insure for crap? Maybe you can insure your, your vagina there. I mean, that's yeah. It. I mean, God, well, if he can, why can't you? Right, right. I, I mean, I just, I don't know. That's that's very uh, interesting that you can do that. And I, I don't, really, I would, I would like to see the underwriting policy of how you write. Right, yeah. Or, who did quote. that? Yeah. Who, what I company is insuring decks? I mean, you know, <laughs> uh, that's that's quite interesting. So, to, to piggyback off that, before we get out of here, one question I do like to ask because this is something that regardless of what stars we have on the show, everybody has their own preference. You said this guy had a nice one. What is like the perfect size for you? Is it, is it extremely big? Meaning what is the ideal cock size for you? I don't think it's length for me. Sure. Yeah. I like, I like a nice thick cock. 
Okay. For sure. Yeah. Girth, girth over length <laughs> for me. Mm-hmm. But it mostly about how important. you use it, right? Well, like, yeah, 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 absolutely. You got to have a little skill. Um, and doesn't need to be insured either. You know, you can come, <laughs> you can come rolling dirty, as they say, no insurance. <laughs> <laughs> rolling turkey <laughs> there's so many uh innuendos you can use with this uh cock insurance <laughs> and who is it what's this guy's name i gotta look this up what's his yeah name? kieran lee kieran lee yeah i gotta i gotta look this up that's hilarious he's funny as hell too like if you follow him you'll be cracking up <laughs> well Lindsay, i've had a blast on this show man i hope you've enjoyed it as well Absolutely. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, for sure. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we'll put all of our available allowed links for Lindsay in the show notes to this episode. Please go check them out. Follow her on Instagram while you can. Follow her on Facebook. And of course, you can find all of her subscriptions, I'm assuming, to your OnlyFans, Sex Panther, et cetera, on all your links for sure. Correct? Correct. Yes. Thank you. All righty. Well, Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Hollywood Wade. That was Lindsay Ryder. And unfortunately, we are out of time. Tune in next week for an all new episode of Crime and Entertainment. Lindsay, we appreciate you.